Hello? I have news. There is a superhero in Armenia, Colombia, and his name is Gringo Man. And this is his story. Hold on to your hats. Here we go. The handsome and very intelligent English teacher, John Blondin, was hiding a secret. He had known all his life that he was different from other people in Armenia. He talked differently, he looked different, and he did things differently to most people around him. No one suspected that he was special. They just thought he was odd or eccentric. They went into his house for lessons, but he didn't show them all the house. They only saw the main room and the bathroom. John Blondin was quite secretive and he hated surprise visits. It was very rare that someone would call on him and he would let them in his house. Most times he spoke to them from the window and sometimes he would go down and talk to them at the front door, but he never invited them in. He always made excuses that the house was dirty or that he was preparing his classes or that he was just going out. But everyone knew that Blondin was up to something. Some people were mean-spirited, miserable people and claimed that John was just being miserable and unsociable, whereas other people said that they respected his right to privacy. Of course, whatever their public point of view, each and every one of them was intrigued by Blondin's secrecy and mysterious behaviour. There were crazy theories that he had someone hidden up in that bedroom, or that he took drugs, or was hiding some dark secret from everyone. Whatever their theory, one thing everyone had in common was the opinion that Blondin was a damn good teacher and that he had never given anyone any reason to mistrust him in the classroom and no one feared being alone with him. He was mysterious, but he certainly wasn't creepy and his students thrived and they never hesitated to recommend him to their friends or families. John Blondin was odd and different, but he was also useful in the community. Street crime was a big problem in Armenia and normal citizens were being attacked and robbed in the streets and on buses and the situation was getting out of control. The police seemed unable to cope with the increased level of incidents and now bars and restaurants were suffering because no one wanted to go out at night. Of course, some people had no choice because they had to work or study and they continued to be victims of these crimes. The citizens of Armenia were fed up with this situation and it was the main topic of conversation among friends and work colleagues. Even La Cronica was reporting that there was no real solution to this problem because there simply weren't enough police. There wasn't enough money in Armenia to employ more police. Of course, the people blamed the politicians and the politicians pretended they cared about the situation, but nothing was gonna change and everyone knew it. Then, one week in 2016, people started to talk about something different, something wonderful, and something to give them hope. Although some people were sceptical about what they heard, it was re being, being repeated enough that even the sceptics started to talk about it. Honest citizens had started talking about a mysterious hero who had appeared from nowhere and saved them from being robbed at the last moment. Everything had happened so fast, but all of them were saying the same thing. A superhero had arrived in Armenia. La Cronica 
started to run stories by people who had apparently been saved from dangerous situations. And as the weeks passed, the same story was repeated over and over again. Just as they were about to be robbed, there was a flash of light, a smell of cheap vodka and medicated shampoo, and then he was gone. The robbers were always sitting on the floor, tied up with a potato stuck in their mouths, and the only thing they found at the scene each time was a card. The small card was simple, a British flag with the words, to be or not to be. The stories were so unbelievable that it wasn't necessary to exaggerate them. In fact, when people were repeating what they had heard, they started to leave out some of the information because they were accused of inventing things. For instance, there was a time when Gringo Man flew down from the top of the government building in Plaza Bolivar to help a young woman who was being attacked. They say that he flew down using a specially constructed umbrella only made in London and that he left a trail of red, blue and white smoke. He picked up the woman in his arms and carried her to safety before disappearing. On another occasion, the Gringomobile appeared out of the rain and blocked the path of a couple of young thieves on a motorbike who had just stolen a mobile phone from a pregnant woman walking in the street. The bike hit the front of the vehicle and the boys flew through the air and crashed down onto a street cart full of avocados. The street seller was shocked as he saw his fruit destroyed. Ringo Man walked over to the avocado cart, took the phone and returned it to the woman. The avocado seller looked at all this mess and started shouting, Guacamole! 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 In the gold, in the gold museum one night, a couple of dumb thieves were trying to break the glass when suddenly Gringo Man appeared be behind the glass among the gold exhibits. The robbers froze and looked at each other and Gringo Man smiled as he saw them looking at each other, trying to work out how he was on the inside of the glass. If you're not smart enough to work out how I got in here, then you're not smart enough to be crooks. Go and get a job at McDonald's. Ringo Man fixed crime fighting with sarcasm, ridicule, and a genuine dis disappointment at how many idiots there are in our lives today. It seemed to him that young people simply don't have enough brains, or maybe they don't know how to use them. He would often tie up his offender, stick a potato in his mouth, and then spend 20 minutes telling him how things were different when he was young. At the end of 20 minutes, these poor young kids were happy for the police to arrive to save them from more boring British preaching about the good old days. Another of his eccentricities was pulling down trousers and forcing baseball caps down onto heads. It seems like Gringo Man disliked the fashion among the street thieves of wearing their jeans halfway down their asses, so he would pull them all the way to the floor and leave them sitting there in their fake Calvin Klein boxes with their hands tied behind their backs. He also couldn't stand seeing those idiots with their shiny baseball caps balancing on top of their heads. So he pulled them down so hard that they covered their ears. Gringo Man didn't like fashion. Mostly though, Gringo Man was a hero to the people in the street. He did what everyone wished they could do. And he did what no policeman could ever do. Be in the right place at the right time. He didn't like the justice system but he loved justice, and Facebook was full of videos of people praising him and applauding his work. 
There were also lots of videos of street boys with their hats pushed down over their ears, sitting in their boxes to laugh at and stare and share. You would think that the police in Armenia would be pleased to have a superhero helping them, but all they did was complain. They complained because they were called to lots of scenes of crimes and had to deal with lots more paperwork. Added to this, the fact that no crime was actually committed and that the main witness disappeared each time and the police had no choice but to let the criminals walk free. In fact, crime started to increase in Armenia as people realised they could take a chance with a low risk of prosecution. Some people had been able to take quick photos during the attacks and all that could be seen was a black cape and a full head of blonde hair with the, wor with the words to be or not to be on the cards and those fuzzy shots of a blonde caped crusader. It wasn't long before the name Gringo Man was on everyone's lips. But as many people were against Gringo Man as were for him. People were calling for him to come forward and work with the police to put the criminals behind bars where they belonged. Our secret hero, introverted English teacher John Blondin, had a crisis meeting with his trusted companions. Roberto, his slow but faithful butler, and Maria, his financial advisor. Their meeting was held in an old billiard room above the mariachi bands near Exito Cristal. Before the meeting started, they followed their usual ritual. They had a cup of tea and a biscuit and talked about the weather for 10 minutes. Roberto always served the tea slowly while Maria counted the money in the bank. John Blondin preferred English biscuits, but wafers were okay. Here, in the old billiard room, they kept all the specially designed super tools that Gringo Man used in his missions, like the Gringo Ball Grabber, the Gringo New Division Glasses, the Gringo Exploding Cocktail Shakers and, of course, the Gringo Mobile, an old English black taxi with a top speed of 87 kilometres per hour. They had the super-fast Gringo computer linked to hundreds of CCTV cameras all around the city and Gringo Man was always ready to react to any situation. Roberto was always inventing new gadgets and Maria always paid for everything. The meeting had one agenda, to be or not to be Gringo Man. This was the question. While yes, people were being saved from muggings and attacks, there were now many more attacks which one superhero could not respond to. Yes, Gringo Man could punish crimes there and then while he had the criminals in his hands but this is illegal. John Blondin spoke to his team of friends. As much as all of us want the criminals to suffer at the hands of their victims we live in a civilized society and Gringo Man is not the victim in any of these cases. So the next day, La Cronica published the following article on its front page. Gringo Man hangs up his cape for good. Last night, we received a message from Gringo Man informing the citizens of Armenia that in the future he will not intervene in any crimes being committed. Although his services are obviously needed in Armenia, he can see that the negatives are greater than the positives. We must all support the police and put pressure on the mayor to get crimes reduced by all means which are legal, so that criminals are caught, prosecuted and punished in the correct way. 
for those of us who have had our lives and possessions saved by Gringo Man, this comes as very sad news. However, we live in a democracy, and so La Cronica understands and fully supports Gringo Man's decision to retire as a vigilante crime fighter, and we thank him for his years of service to this community. God bless you, Gringo Man, whoever you were. To the citizens of Armenia, now is the time for us to join together and combat crime in this city together and not rely on one man to do all our dirty work for us. La Cronica invites each and every one of you to offer your suggestions as to how best we can fight street crime in this wonderful city. We will pass all your suggestions on to the mayor of Armenia and the chief of police. Thank you, La Cronica. So, John Blondin, Roberto and Maria packed away all their super tools and covered up the Gringo Mobile for the last time. But their hearts were full of hope. Hope that they would never be needed again. Hopeful that the citizens of Armenia would find the peace they deserved and hoping that the Mariachis would stop practicing after 11 p.m. at night because he just couldn't sleep with that noise. John went back to teaching and no one ever knew his secret until now.